Greetings. This is the commentary and sermonette on the song, The Christian's Taps. I have the date on this, probably spring of 1982. I think it's the last song I did at a place called Whitworth Bible College, Brookhaven, Mississippi. I was there for one year. I will tell you the lyrics, I substantially redid them this time around in 2018. So even though it was 1982, I've just completely, really redone it. Obviously, what I'm playing is Taps in the beginning, which was either the song that meant lights out for military people or at a funeral. I've been asking the Lord to help me know which songs to do next, and recently I just went to a funeral and they played Taps, and I said, okay, that's my next song to get recorded, so that's why I'm doing it now. So let's get right into the lyrics. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he might please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So that's the first thing. I mean, it just says it right there. No comment necessary. Paul's talking about this to Timothy, and that we're soldiers in Christ. So, you just don't entangle yourself in the affairs of everyday life. Now, I have a regular job, which I've worked for the last 20 plus years, and other jobs I've had that many would call secular work but I have never seen it as secular work. I'm gonna to answer to the Lord for everything I put my hand to as a Christian. Everything, every minute of my life as a Christian, I'll answer to him at the judgment and either be rewarded or rebuked and it'll burn up in front of him. If that isn't ministry, I don't know what is. So when I show up to quote my job, that's my mission field and I'm to do it as unto the Lord with all of my strength and all my might and with all the integrity that God brings to bear to where I am salt and light. And these are our sentry posts. All of us are like that. And if we see that, it changes everything. I don't have Blue Mondays. I'm going to my mission field. I'm reporting for duty. It just changes everything. So do not buy into this secular work stuff. It's just garbage, absolute garbage. The Bible doesn't teach that. Labor with your own hands, the good thing. God calls manual labor the good thing not secular work the good thing gosh i hate religion anyway no longer our own bought for glory gifted and tasked to share his story we number our days redeem time in ways to advance his cause gone the life that was this is really i think it's a great verse because we aren't our own, we've been bought with a price. And we're bought for glory, to share his story. That's why we're here. We're gifted in task. He says in Corinthians that the Spirit gifts us individually as he wills. We don't decide what spiritual gifts we get, he does. And even our natural talents and abilities, that's something God decides. We number our days, that comes straight out of Moses, said teach us to number our days that we might present unto thee a heart of wisdom so we do one day at a time so whether it's a marriage you can't be faithful for a whole lifetime you can be faithful today your work you can't work two days in one our family raising our family you can't raise them for two days in one day you do one day at a time I praise God for that and we redeem our time in ways to advance his cause so there's a place and time for recreation and enjoyment, smelling the roses, so to speak, all of that. Taking miniature breaks and little breaks, but we should have projects and causes that we're involved in that we feel the Lord has called us to, and you'll see in a minute we'd be faithful to these things. But gone, the life that was. See, the soldiers are saying, we're doing all these things, numbering our days and advancing his cause. Gone, the life that was. You know where that comes from. If any man be in Christ, behold a new creation. Old things passed away, behold new things have come. The old things were gone. It's new, it's a new life. In light of that, then the narrator comes back in. So set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on this earth. For you have died, and your life's now hidden with Christ in God, under his staff and rod. Now here's a little bit of a clue to why the taps. 
For you have died, and your life's now hidden with Christ in God. We'll come back to that. But by setting your mind on the things above, not on the things on this earth, that's always a challenge for us because this life is very real. All of the situations we have are in real time. And I think he's mainly talking about we don't put more weight on this in terms of hanging on to it as others might do. We cannot hang on to this life, so we should set our mind on the things above and what God's interests are, not on the things that are on this earth. So our life's hidden with Christ and God. We're under his staff and rod. The staff would be for guidance. The rod would be for correction. I could speak a lot on that, but it's a combination of both. And only those who call upon the Lord have the staff and the rod applied in this life. Those who are not of God, who are not His, He doesn't discipline them. All that's waiting for them is punishment. So present members of your body as weapons of righteousness to God. Dead, another clue, taps, to immorality, passion and greed, which is idolatry. The Bible teaches that our body, physical body, we are to present the members of this body to Him as a weapon for righteousness. So what we put our hand to, we do it for righteousness sake. We do it, do right things, good things. Where we take our feet, where we put our eyes. You know, if, if somebody's watching me and all of a sudden they see me look at a woman's body parts, that's a weapon of unrighteousness. If they see that I don't do that, and Job talked about that, he didn't gaze upon the virgin, if they see I don't do that, they can see that as a weapon of righteousness for God, that I am saying no to what my sin nature would say yes to. So the members of our body, which includes our tongue, includes our eyes, includes our hands and our feet, we present these things, these members to God as a weapon of righteousness to do what's right. We're dead to immorality, passion, and greed. And that's interesting, the thing about greed being idolatry, if you are greedy, you are wanting things to satisfy just yourself at the expense of others, and that greed is idolatry because we're making it as bigger than God. So that's idolatry. Because you see, even though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. The world, in its war, it's all bullets and guns and espionage and deceit and lying and all this stuff. No, even though we walk in the flesh, we do not war like the rest. We are in a different kind of war. And it is a war for truth. We don't war like the rest because it's with God's very words. His words we slay and bring life. Destroyed speculations replaced with God's light. This two-edged sword, well, it accomplishes both. See, it destroys speculations, it replaces it with God's light. It's lethal to death, but in life, causes growth, so it accomplishes both. That's the beauty of the Word of God. God doesn't just say no, 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 to then turn to nothing. He doesn't say, come follow me, to where we leave the ways of the world, to then go to nothing. He turns us from darkness to light, from evil to good, from unrighteousness to righteousness. He is calling us to His fields, His information, His truths, His works, to Him. And that is not going and turning to nothing. It is turning to the substance of the eternal Creator, which is limitless. Blessed be the Lord, our Commander and King, training our hands for war and makes our hearts sing. A bow of bronze we bend with arms he's now strengthened. He now is our life. Yes, he now is our commission. It's really something. There is a simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. It's like another song I've got. I found my work. What is my work? To proclaim another's to proclaim what Jesus did. That is my work. Gosh.
gosh, what a relief. So he strengthens us. That's one of the funny things about this is that he breaks us down and there are times we are broken, but we're not gonna stay there and he will strengthen us, renewing our strength. We'll have wings like eagles. There's times he talks about bathing our steps in butter. We'll ride on the heights of the earth rather than the dregs of this earth. So he does, he, he trains our hands for war. We learn, we grow, we see that it is, Satan is indeed the enemy behind this. And he gives us tools to fight the injustices and the wickedness of this life. I've got a young lady right now, there's a supposed brother and sister that have really hurt her and damaged her. She couldn't even sleep last night over it and wrestling through it. And I've talked with her a little bit, it's been by texting, but I want to talk to her in person and say, well, let's say that they don't think they did anything wrong and they never come to you and apologize. Are you going to let that continue to mess you all up? Are you going to give them that kind of power? So we do get damaged, we do get sinned against, we do get injured. We got to wrestle through that, but we also got to recognize, can I give this person this kind of power? Because they're going off just as happy as can be, and here we are all crippled up. God wants to train our hands for war, and a bow of bronze we can bend with arms he's now strengthened. So what are we doing? We're bringing down every lofty thing that lifts its head in opposition. What's arrayed against him will find a bitter end. Nothing will prevail as we storm the gates of hell. And then I say, sin won't win. Sin won't win. Sin won't win. So as soldiers, we are attacking. So by bringing down every lofty thing in opposition, it's things that are in opposition to him that we want to bring down. Not in opposition to me or what I think, in opposition to him. Because everything arrayed against him We'll have a bitter end. There's no wisdom, there's no counsel, there's no understanding against the Lord. He's going to win on every single point of contention. He will win on everything. Nothing will prevail as we storm the gates of hell. We are to be attacking the darkness. We're not to participate in it, and in evil we're to be babes, but we're to expose evil. So may God grant us the wisdom to know what areas to attack, when to attack, and how to attack. We need wisdom in all these matters. But we're not bystanders and victims on the sidelines. We are be aggressively storming the gates of hell because sin won't win. We need to know that. I don't care what sin it is that anybody commits and anything that comes against us, it is not going to prevail. It will not win. It cannot win. God is determined that this will never be the case. So that's why we need to leave off of our own sin and not participate in sin and not participate in the sin of others because it isn't going to win. And as a soldier, we are soldiers of righteousness. So endure hardship because there is going to be hard things that come with this as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Taking heed to the ministries that you've received. So whatever God has called us to, whatever feels, we need to pay close attention to it and be diligent, and we need to repent when we need to repent. But we need to go on offense. For in due time we will reap, he says, if we do not grow weary. And that's where I just change it to say, we must not grow weary. Because in due time we will reap. It's a promise from God. I can assure myself of this, and I can assure you of this. Every single ounce of energy that we expend towards God in this life, that will never be regretted. When we stand before the Lord, we will not say, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that, or I wish I hadn't said no to that sin, or I wish I... We will be so happy for every single act of obedience. And it's a short life. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. When it's done, it's done. We will reap. We must not grow weary. We must not grow weary in well-doing. Keep doing what's right. I went through a divorce recently, and the co-owner, the wife, she only said really one thing. Right when this got started, she said, Robin, you just do what's right. 
that was a very good word, just to do what's right. So as event after event after event came up, you just do what's right. Now here's where I close. To become his soldier, a soldier of life, is to live a great, great mystery. Those called to these fields hear with certainty that in this cause of glory, we die daily. We die daily. We die daily. The old man, the desires of myself, must die daily. Paul said, I die daily in this cause. I cannot live my entire Christian life today. I can't be faithful to the Lord for my entire life today. He calls me, though, to be faithful to Him today, to do what I need to do today, to be a soldier for Him this day, and every day we wake up, we get a new start. His loving kindnesses are new every morning. Each day is a new opportunity. And usually when I wake up, I'm, I'm thinking what day it is, and I'm thanking Him, and I'm asking Him to let this day be a productive day for you. I just ask Him that before I even get my eyes opened. I can live for Him today, and we die daily. But we're a soldier of life. Oh, the, the Bible is beautiful. This, this whole thing is just beautiful. The Word of God slays and gives life. It brings life. It is amazing to me how God's words change what I do, change my priorities, change my direction in life, change everything. Simple words. Words. That's why I'm committed to the Word of God. I want to know what it says. As much as I can, I want to get into original languages. I'm not afraid to look at the textual variants and study all that material to try to get at what the original was saying, to look at the language and the syntax to figure out what he's trying to convey to where I'm learning his Word and growing in his Word. It is a marvelous, marvelous thing. The Christian life is, is an amazing journey and endeavor and I hope that you're on it and I hope you commit yourself to it and I hope you'll see yourself as a soldier and you'll be a soldier of life one that dies daily and then taps kicks in and if you notice I also have marching feet going at the end of this I think that's it appreciate your time appreciate you listening and like I always say if you listen you are gonna learn and this is all the material, as I say over and over and over, that this material you learn means you will indeed live.